Hello everyone, it is Saturday, um, April 21st, 2012, and uh, I'm actually my, um, I guess I do my uh, my little video productions, my audio productions in uh, Lakewood, Ohio, where I reside, of the United States, but right now I'm in, uh, I'm in, I think it's Rocky River, and uh I'm in a little park right on the lake, and I thought I'd come down here and take a picture of the lake with the waves on the water. And uh, I tried to take some pictures of the... The sky was kind of overcast this morning. I was out there uh, out by my house, I guess, around 7 o'clock this morning with uh, Comet the Wonder Dog. But um, I, I didn't have any luck getting a great shot of the sky because it was just kind of a... Uh, a flat gray across the sky and and uh with the low lighting the uh the uh trees and things uh were not coming into focus real well so uh, for whatever reason so I, I wasn't happy with the photos so I, and it didn't happen and i uh i went out for a while earlier today and uh so anyway i, I thought i'd try this it's um it's 3:38 p.m. right now and that's us Eastern time zone, and uh, you know, I started thinking about time zones. We think uh, I think we have five time zones in the United States, of which uh, what well, you've got daylight savings time, and uh, you've got the time change uh, changes back and forth a couple times a year, and uh, so I, I was thinking, you know, in terms of time zones, having the five time zones here. And uh, the world being more globalized and international, what are the time zones around the world and how do we recognize those? And as we record those times and uh, reference them throughout the world, whether or not the, uh, the, the time zones are a factor. So one of the things that I started doing is writing U.S. Eastern Time Zone because, as I said, there are 197 um, territories and countries around the world of which uh, um, I, I'm not sure I hadn't thought about it there may be uh, you know within I think there are there are international time zones and um, but uh, you know I think we think typically of time zones as being a domestic thing versus an international and uh, which reminds me of you know traveling internationally and uh, my former work as a secretary, having a boss that traveled internationally and trying to keep track of hours and places and time zones and and uh, uh, arrivals and departures and uh, things like that. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think on one occasion in my own traveling, I, I worked uh, I worked one day, which is ac was actually the uh, time recorded was uh, that I had put in over 24 hours in, uh, I don't know if I had like a 28 hour day or something like that on one of my uh, time reporting cards. And, uh, you know, once you start working in multiple time zones and traveling, uh, traveling around the country or around the world and uh, for work and uh, I, I mean I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with that sort of thing but I wasn't and uh, it's kind of new to me and there might be a few people that aren't familiar with that but um, you know the uh, I put in you know, it's possible to put in a 40-hour day, I guess, if, you, you know, if you're connecting flights and uh, um, sleeping on planes and, uh, and uh, maybe you have some layovers or some delays and things like that. And, uh, you know, you just you have no idea. But anyway, I'm down here on Lake Erie looking at the uh, waves on the lake coming in on the beach. And uh, it's a nice little park here. Uh, it's kind of tucked away, hidden right on the lake in Rocky River. I always have a difficult time finding it, but I always do. And uh, there's a little playground and a little pavilion area. And then there's, um, you know, there's some parking spots here and and uh, it's a beach, uh, no swimming beach. You're not allowed to go swimming here, but um, right now there's a lot of driftwood on the beach. Um, I don't, I don't really, I can't think of a lot I have to talk about right now. Um, there's not really too many people down here right now. It's overcast. 
it, earlier today, uh, this morning when I was out at around 7 o'clock this morning, I think there was a fine mist drizzle in the air, and uh, it's slightly windy. It's, it's, I don't know what the temperature is. It's, uh, it's cool. It's not a warm day. It's not really a winter day, but it's kind of cool out. It's probably, probably in the 50s, I'm guessing, but I don't know. And, uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, maybe I'll record more later. I, I just thought I'd try to, uh, try doing a recording from a, uh, different location than, uh, my home office and, uh, <laughs> in my dining room. And, uh, see how that works and whether or not, um, you know, I can do anything with that. Uh, one of the things that I had thought of doing, uh, uh, and I did a couple days ago, I read one of my papers, which was on the uh, the NASA. I did it at Cuyahoga Community College when I was working on my associate degree in science. And uh, so I, I've got a lot of papers. I've uh, got a ton of papers that I've written, and I really did enjoy them. And uh, so I... Uh, I've got a lot of papers I guess I can read and record. The other thing, you know, in terms of making money, some of the ideas that I've come up with as ideas are uh, just touring places and taking pictures and putting together video and slideshow productions of which might be of interest. One of the things that I thought about, and I've come up with some interesting ideas. One of the ideas, um, oh, I thought they were interesting. I don't know if anyone else thinks they're interesting, but um, I came up with... Um, the idea of putting together basically video uh, productions, um, narrated video productions, of which I can copy to uh, CD and uh, you know maybe sell that to someone as a uh, what, what are they called? Kind of like a mini lecture or a lecture, and uh, of which has video and audio, and uh, of some of the places that I've traveled to and taken pictures. And, uh, you know, take those pictures, put them together, make a slideshow, create a video, do some narration, talk to people about what it is, you know, talk, talk to the, the camera, the recorder about those places and, uh, what you know about them. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe everyone's already thought of these ideas and done them, but that's something that I thought I might be able to do. And, uh, you know, in terms of audiences, I was thinking of uh, people who are shut in, especially in places, maybe older people, elder, elderly people, nursing homes, hospitals, um, children. You know, there are some situations where children or adults, uh, they, they can't, for whatever reason, go to places, whether or not they've got... Um, you know, different types of challenges, medical challenge, challenges or whatever. Um, even, you know, even not even necessarily medical challenges, but, you know, it, it might be even situations for whatever reason people might be institutionalized and there are different types of institutionalizations, whether or not it's mental illness or, uh, you know, what are they called? I, I don't like prison systems and things like that. Um, home jail situations and, uh, um, so there, are, there, you know, I was thinking about, for, for example, when I, and I think I've mentioned this previously, and I'm no longer a deacon at church, um, but I had been, and during that time, I spent uh, some time with an elderly man who I was sort of buddied up with, and, um, and I went to church, I picked him up every Sunday, and we went to church together, and it was good for me because I enjoyed his company. I, I kind of like talking to uh, people who are what are referred to as, and I don't know if that's politically correct, but uh, elderly people, because I think, you know, they've got a lifetime of experiences and wisdom which uh, they can share if they, if uh, they you know, it's well, it's wonderful if they do because it's just great hearing about all all the information and stories and wisdom they have in their heads and experience. And um, so anyway, um, what was I, uh, where was I going with this off on another tangent? When I spent time with this man, um, he uh, he and I, I, uh, I did some things um, like we would go for a ride in the park and we went to a play and a movie and different things, you know, over and above the church activities that he might, he was in a, uh, an assisted care, um, senior center. So, um, you know, and 
excuse me, he uh, he he was no longer going and going to a lot of the places and doing a lot of the things he had uh, previous to living there. So you know, I, I guess I um, I kind of liked taking him out and doing things with him and uh, you know spending some time with him, sharing his company. And uh, it, it was just really nice feeling like uh, you know you were. I don't. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just. It, it really did make him happy to be able to go out and see. You know, take a drive down to the lake or a drive past where he went to school. And uh, I think one time we went to the grocery store, which he he you know he didn't typically do. So it meant. It, it seemed like it meant a lot to him. One time we went to the art museum and uh, and looked at one of the. Uh, one of the halls there at the art museum and uh that that was really uh special for him and because it was special for him it you know it was special for me too and um so what i i guess my point being that you know there are people like that that no longer are getting out and it might be something like a trip to the uh uh, to the local market or or a neighborhood where they used to live that you could take pictures of if they can't get out and might have a special request that you know they they really would like to um you know to go to the zoo but for whatever reason they're not able to do that and uh or they really would like to take a ride down their old neighborhood through their old neighborhood or or really would like to uh see some pictures of downtown uh you know, or whatever area, maybe they had a special, you know, a lot of people find the places that they work and their, um, their, uh, you know, the things that they did uh, before, you know, they, they weren't able to go do all those things. That's, that's significant to them. So, you know, I was kind of, and I know with the man uh, from church that I spent the time with, um, he, he he was interested in uh, talking to me about his work and where he worked and when he, where he went to school and and things like that so you know having pictures of those and putting it together as a slideshow presentation creating a video doing some audio narration and things like that maybe digging up some information history or maybe information about architecture or, you know in terms of a zoo or or whatever and and just whatever it is wherever it is just uh you know putting those together and and sharing those with people um yeah i think uh, one of the things that i'm going to maybe work on later today is a presentation for uh, to share with the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the director of, if i get to it i i, I get tired uh, more easily than i used to but i was uh later on i was going to try working on a uh presentation for the uh the audience at the senior center, the community senior center, of which the director had uh, inquired of some interest. I put together a flyer, and with all the places, not all of them, but many of the places that I had been to that I had photographs of, and, and I have all these photos, so it's it's basically, you know, I've got a library of photos and, that I can use and, uh, and put these things together with, uh, you know. So it's it's not real... real uh, Real complicated, yeah. It's probably more or less difficult, depending on, you know, what your familiarity with computers and technology and what you have available to you. But uh, basically, what I'm doing, I'm using a PowerPoint, a tape recorder. Hand. I've got this right here that I'm recording on is a uh, little digital tape recorder that, and it sounds very professional after it's recorded. It sounds. I was listening to my NASA my NASA video, or, or yeah, I guess the the audio recording where I, where I had talked about NASA. And I was like, wow, that sounds like I'm in a NASA lecture hall. That's really nice. And uh, but this, I think this recorder records something like 400 hours, digital hours, and uh, so that's a lot of recording time and. Uh, so, not that you necessarily need all that, but that's that's a lot of recording time, and I've got a digital camera. It's a fairly inexpensive one, and uh, and that's pretty easy to use. And for the purpose of doing, you know, just online posting YouTube videos and and doing, you know, things on. I, I think if it's projected on a large screen, the uh, the quality becomes more critical. But uh, the requirements to produce something become more critical. I'm not sure. I haven't experimented, experimented with larger uh, projection areas or larger 
larger audience areas, but um, you know, on a, on a smaller scale, you know, that's basically what I'm doing. I've got a camera, I've got a tripod, I've got a laptop computer, and I've got a tape recorder, and that's how I'm producing these things. And uh, I had put together a, uh, a kind of a video um, video resume, and uh, the video resume that I did was uh, basically. I think what I did was I had three PowerPoint presentations going simultaneously, uh, running slideshows simultaneously on the screen, the computer screen, and then I videotaped that uh, with my camera while I narrated it, of which the audio then was through the video on the camera. So. Uh, anyway, I, it was kind of the one that I did. It, it was kind of I thought it was a really good idea. It's kind of a draft. It's not real, real polished, but for a first, first shot uh, try at something like that, I thought it turned out pretty well. And uh, so, in terms of ideas, I've done that. And uh, you know, if if you do have uh, photographs from uh, old vacation trips and things like that that you can talk about, I was I was going to work with my mom. Um, on something. She's got a lot of photographs like my grandmother's, uh, you know, back back uh, when her mom, her mom's photo albums. And so we were going to sit down and take some pictures, uh, ba basically using a macro lens, taking photographs of pictures and uh, putting together a PowerPoint presentation and then uh, creating the slideshow and turning that into a video and uh, so, yeah, and narrating that and talking about those pictures of which, uh, you know, my mom wanted to uh, to do something special uh, with the photos she had of her mom and family album. So, you know, again, there's there's something else, but you know, the the pictures that you do have, even if you don't have a digital camera, right? Well, if you, I guess, if you do have a digital camera right now or a scanner. Uh, you know, putting those together and uh, using old vacation photos. So, anyway, that's uh, that's. I guess that's about it for now. Um, I've, uh, like I said, <laughs> I still haven't found a job, and I still haven't been able to make any money doing anything. But I thought I'd pass that along. And uh, well, what time is it here? Let's see. It's now 3:54 p.m. It's the, uh, as I said, the U.S. Eastern Time Zone, and uh, the, uh, and I'm down down by Lake Erie Beach, uh, well, not that's not the name of the beach, but uh, down on the uh, shores of uh, Lake Erie in Rocky River, Ohio, which is a suburb, uh, the second suburb west of Cleveland, Ohio, on the northern border of Ohio, which actually I'm, uh, I'm on the northern border of the United States. Uh, across the lake is Canada. So, anyway, have a great day. It is April 21st, 2012, and uh, my name is Intimitterbach. Have a great day.